man, the Lakers should have rested their starters in game five. Oh, come on. They really should have. They were on to something on Get Out. They were on to something. I'll tell you. culpa. <laughs> I got that one wrong. Anthony Davis went off in a wheelchair. We'll get to that in a second because I didn't think that that was. No, the... no, 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 no. We are not starting with the uh, Lakers the today. Lower? First of all, Mike Ryan, I was so furious reading your tweets last night what? because you have carved out a lane where no matter what happens to the Miami Heat now in this postseason, yes. somehow you're right. And it pisses me off yeah. to yeah. no end. Yeah. Tweeting, oh, this this Heat team's not even very good. Whereas a week ago, you were gloating about how great this Miami Heat team was, even though a month ago you were saying they weren't even going to make the playoffs. Yeah. What is wrong with you? You should uh, be ashamed of yourself. I, I just saw a person got caught dead in their tracks in a lie. A lie that's been going for several weeks and there were no consequences. I have seen George Soros lie in front of microphones. I have seen person after person. Santos. 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 I mean, you, you conspiracy theorists. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Are you even sure? <laughs> I have seen people that are I just was puzzled. Sh shameless and keep moving on to great personal benefit. And I have decided when it comes to the Miami Heat, I will not be bound by shame. Okay, uh, I'm going <laughs> to stop you here because you must be and you have to be. And Jessica, I don't want I don't want you diluted here speaking for the fans of this audience. Mike, uh, excuse me, why not? Uh, <laughs> Mike Bryan has been obnoxious and inconsistent and doesn't get to be on the bandwagon and on the B-A-N-N-E-D wagon, and he gets to do it from every show. They win, he gets obnoxious gas bag, the worst he kind of Heat fan. You know, 10 years yes, of, of learning how to be the hated yes, Heat fan. Yes, I do. And then they lose, and he starts with the Lakers. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. No. Here's why. No. If the Miami Heat win this title, I will be on a float. I will 100% oh, no. be on a float. No. Again! I will, no. Again! No, 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 no. For no, no, no. the on. third time. I'm going to stop, stop you right there because we're going to have one representative on the float, but it's not going to be you. You don't make the rules. And I do. You I do. I do. Don't. I do. I do in this you regard. You know what's going to happen? Gonna be me? The it's, Miami it's Heat, you're on the Panthers The floor. Miami ah, Heat will ask me to be on the float. No, no, no. You know who's going to be on the float from Metal Log Media? Not Parakeet. The intern. No. 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 Oh, Mike, sure. I texted him last night. Oh, okay. No, he, that's a good call. He, he's at, I was at like, this, which intern? <laughs> at, this, at this point, Mike sure is, is saying, like, the Heat are going to win three, three titles in a row. Like, that, that's how far deep into his paranoia he is. I sent him a text last night saying, how can you not love this guy when Jimmy drew the flagrant foul on Josh Hart? And he says, how can you not hate him? He says, I hate that all you guys, you naysayers, and you got you, you jamokes and all this stuff, he said, and these guys are going to go and win the championship now. And I was right, but you guys wouldn't listen to me. I, I think that's fair. I will yield my time to the representative from Los Angeles. <laughs> if you think we are a bandwagon, I will have you know that my father was in one of these parades. And my father uh, went on ESPN television very early and said in about 2010, middle of that first season, he said, I have been with the Heat all my life. Yeah. I've been with them since LeBron got here. <laughs> That's one of my favorite and, lines. No, and, it was, it, and he was dead serious. He wasn't fooling around. That's Miami. Miami is loud when it wins. Miami is absent or quiet or hiding when it loses. And, Jessica, I think you should let Mike have it after that because Jimmy Butler didn't look like Himmy last night. He was invisible. He was resting. Actually. He was invisible for large parts of the game. Made me wonder about, man, he's been limping in to the arena. He doesn't. He looks like an old man, like my deal. Old deal. Walking in in Chancletas, uh, shuffling around the apartment because he's milking the. I, I don't know how hurt he is, but he looks like he's limping on the way to the arena the same way that Anthony Davis takes a wheelchair out of that game last night. I'm not just saving this for Mike Ryan, by the way, because you mentioned the word absent, Dan. Miami Heat fans are missing when they lose. Have you noticed there's been one member of the show who has not been in at work the morning after Heat playoff losses to the Knicks, and his name rhymes with heart. Hair, what? fart bear. Oh. Oh. Jeremy uh, Tache, okay. oh. where is he? Yeah. Where right. is went Jeremy? Rhyme on the nickname. Yeah, you went yeah. rhyme that's top. You not can't a, do that. Not also, Jeremy also, I'm not going to hear this from a Nick fan. I woke up to a tweet of audio from Kid Mero telling me to bleep his bleep. All right? You don't get to tell me to bleep your bleep. I can't fill in those blanks, Mike. Jessica, who are you rooting for? It rhymes with hot. What? <laughs> you, have, you have a million teams. Who are you She's rooting? a Knicks fan. But I don't think she's a public Hold Knicks on. fan. Wait a second. 
Is that Tony Romo? You have eight million favorite teams. You are clearly are someone who does not mind going to the buffet of teams to pick teams. And you picked the Knicks? You went to this lovely spread of all the great basketball teams out there and said, hmm, let me get the one that someone sneezed on. <laughs> this is the first I'm hearing of it that you're a Knicks fan. I'm in, well, I am in the Levitard Show Knicks Look graphic. Well, you say look at this guy, and we are largely an audio medium, but yes, we have outside of the arena right now uh, that Nick's turd that wasn't properly vetted. Nick's fandom is infecting Metal Arc Media that was hidden during the interview process. Like, I did not know. I'm learning right now. Jessica, you've told me about your 50 allegiances. I learn after a victory that you are the same thing you accuse hair. What? Fur of being. <laughs> Wait, what do, you th- what do you think his name is? <laughs> Carefree. Here's the thing, Dan. I'm a Chicago Bulls fan, and my Chicago Bulls were knocked out of the play-in game by these stupid Heat fans that wanted to Uh, tank for someone that they had a 0.5% chance of getting in the draft lottery. Well, but this is typically Miami, too, what Tony did, which is then just lie that he ever said that. And now I'm on the bandwagon of whoever can knock this stupid-ass team out of the playoffs and shut you up for good. Whoa. 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 I love the Miami Heat, but I will concede they're a terrible team, the worst playoff team to ever find their way into the second round. Besides the Knicks. And if they do win, I will also accept a spot on the float. Yeah. Also, I didn't know you were a Blackhawks fan until Connor Bedard was uh, going to them. (laughs) Is there a secret Maple Leafs fan infecting the uh, Metal Arc media somewhere that's going to emerge today because they won a game? In no one, I, no one claims. Well, that, that was uh, that was very disheartening. I've been waiting for this moment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Taylor is outside. Uh, he was punished recently and had to spend an entire show Get off your phone, sitting kid. outside the arena. Now he's happy because Quentin Grimes was hitting threes last night. A uh, the Miami Heat uh, that was not an impressive showing from the Miami Heat. Not an impressive showing from Taylor either. I think he forgot he's supposed to be holding the yeah, sign there up. There you so go. He he's texting somebody. <laughs> he's I, wearing I a Knicks. Three separate words up top. He made a Quentin Grimes poster out of six pages of white printer paper. Brunson uh, last night was what they told me Jimmy Butler is and what yeah, Jimmy right. Butler has proven to be. But Jimmy Butler was not last night. He, that's the worst playoff game. He's put, and, and it's not terrible. It's just he wasn't. He wasn't consistently impacting the game the way that we've gotten very comfortable watching. Did but the Knicks win that game last night, or did the Heat lose oh. it? Because oh, I think oh, the Heat lost question. it. Also, refs were cheating, very clearly. Look at that free throw disparity. Should the Heat have rested their starters? Yes, I think so, because that was a garbage effort from the Miami Heat last night. Not all the players. Not all the players, but it just wasn't good, especially the best player. And he's, a, he's afforded that opportunity. Let, at the heart of the matter... It just wasn't hot enough inside of Madison Square Garden. That's, see, that's where I wanted to go with this. Just the temperature, man. I mean, you know, it, it kind of saps your energy when you go up there and it's a little muggy. Put, it on, CTs. put it on the poll, Juju, at Levitard Show. Did the Heat lose because the Knicks, the Knicks New York had a temperature advantage? Because I believe that that is what happened last night. I believe that the travel back and forth from Miami to New York made uh, legs weak and it's hot outdoors in New York. And, uh, you know, Duncan Robinson was the only one who could do a lot from three. Kevin Love, like I'm so tired in this series. I'm so tired in this series of two things. One, the ball going through Cody Zeller's hands. He's not good, man. That needs to stop. Why are we playing? He's not a good player. Look, let me say this right now, man. The moment they signed him, I looked at him and I said, this guy looks like a guy who has two mortgages and he's behind on both of them. Put it on the poll, please, Juju, at Lebitard Show. Does Cody Zeller look like he's got two mortgages and he's behind on both of them? And, and I just sensed the stress levels coming off of him, and I said, I, mm, I don't think so. Like, that's not a guy I want to rely on right there. I just hate playing New York where they make everything this monumental occurrence. The most memorable free throws in New York sports history might be the Hack of Mitchell. Dude, so my cousin was at the game, and he said the loudest cheer <laughs> all so night good. long. I mean, my friend said the exact same thing. He said it was the craziest he's ever heard in the garden. They're going to be talking about that for years. It's like the moment of the season. They were yeah. so Knicks. scared that this great season, the greatest season they've had in 20 years, was about to end last night. They didn't want it to happen in their arena. Jimmy was quiet all game, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, 
hack on purpose, the seven-footer who's been throwing line drives at the rim. And all of New York was like, I can't trust this. And then he made them. And they're like, wait, I can be loud again. Yeah. It was like when LJ hit the four-point yeah. play. That's, yeah. that's how it was described. It's up there. Me. It's up there with the LJ four-point play. It's up there with Alan Houston. Willis it's Reed. up there with Willis Reed. It's up there when that one time they chanted Bobby Portis's name the entire <laughs> game. I remember that. Let me stop because there's a whole generation that does not know what you were saying with that LJ three that was a four. It was against the Pacers. Larry Johnson shouldn't have been taking threes. He was, oh, taking, he was killing. He what are you was, talking about? He made a three and got fouled, and it is the loudest that Madison Square Garden has been since Phil Jackson and Bill Bradley were wearing shorts that came up their hairy thighs and belts on the shorts. That was the that was uh, the height of Knicks basketball, and they've been starved for it for 20 years, and they'll take it from Brunson and Randall and R.J. Barrett. And they got a game last night from Miami so they don't have to suffer the indignity of having their season ended by Miami by Pat Riley on their home court. To be fair, according to my friends in the Nick chat that I'm in, uh, every game in this series is a home game for the Knicks. That's what, that's what they said confidently at the beginning of the series. Not not the case as someone that's gone to the games. Not look at me, Louie, but uh, just look at me right in the eyes right now, Mero. I will not bleep your bleep. I will not. Look at me, Louie. I'm not going to bleep your bleep. Yeah. Won't bleep your bleep. The series is over on Friday, even though the Miami Heat are not good. Where is Stugat? Uh, he told me to check the Dead & Company tour yeah. schedule <laughs> anytime he's Are we going to have a problem over the next couple of months with Stugat? You asked the question poorly, uh, Jessica. I realized. Okay. Only, okay. No, no, okay. no. Hold on. No. In retrospect, in retrospect, I didn't catch it when it happened either, but in asking him on lie detector if he had stolen the fine bucket and not asking him whether he had stolen the money in the bucket, you allowed a lie detector glitch and a professional yeah, liar to okay. fool the machine. A lot of interrogation experts on Twitter who would have done a better job. Sure. Sorry. I sure. Sure. <laughs> I, I'm with you on that. I didn't notice it when it happened or either. Or maybe I'm in on it. <laughs> Who stole the money in the fine bucket? A Knicks fan, no doubt. <laughs> he knows. He wanted to get together this weekend, and I avoided him because I knew it was going to be that. Oh, it would have been the best weekend to get together with him. No, no. They that, lost twice. No, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't be around. I have been in New, in New York. That brand of New York fandom that has won nothing has been in Miami's ear. That loud, that intensity, those words for two decades. To, be, to be fair, they had your number two decades ago. Like, just, that's why they're loud like that. You didn't want him to make fun of your Grand Prix outfit, so you avoided him this weekend. I don't think Kevin Love's ever been called that before. How does that sound to people who just heard the bleeped out version? <laughs> Congratulations. Because they're probably <laughs> unsure of what just happened. Jessica, that is uh, Mero from Jesus and Mero, and he, uh, one of the reasons I love their show, and I hate that late night television and corporations screwed up their show, because... Well... I don't know if it was late night corporations that did that as far as it seemed like there were some internal dynamics. I'm friends with Miro. I don't want to speak too much. Well, but, but you've already done this. I don't know anything, I don't know and he's never talked about it. And some stuff happened between them that made a really great comedy duo that was getting a power chance. Very few get mm -hmm. break up after five or ten years. But, yes, the, without saying too much about Miro, that's a lot. Everything that that is. But that's how he is. It's he, a lot to avoid a gentleman's sweep. Have you ever? Yeah, first of all, that's a little too excited, Meryl, for, <laughs> to, to not get your ass beat in five games. Is <laughs> to, not To have your heart in your throat when Mitchell Robinson's going to the line yeah. because you've blown a 20-point lead. Put it on the poll, please, Juju, at Lebitard uh, Show. Did Mitchell Robinson's free throws last night surpass what Willis Reed did in limping onto the court? I, I – but – the, to the point, Dan, is they're loud specifically against this town for two reasons. One, obviously, there are a lot of New Yorker transplants down here. But the other one is because of what happened in 98 
and 99 and 2000. This is their most successful stretch of basketball, those three years. It, it trumps everything but that, that's happened that, in they, years. They be, look, man, for people who don't remember what the history of the rivalry is because it's so old, Pat Riley's been here for 25 years, and in those 25 years, he's given Miami basketball what New York basketball has wanted to have, had when they had him, and then replaced with the well, the meanderings of Phil Jackson because... Well, yeah, but I'm a relax. Panther fan, and I haven't enjoyed success since 1996, and I'm not sending out tweets like, Mitch Marner, bleep my bleep! Josh uh, Morris, bleep my bleep! Hold on, hold on, hold on. If, Austin Matthews, bleep my bleep! If you guys were playing the Lightning, though. Yeah. Oh, 88, yeah. bleep my bleep! What do you want to correct me on? Bleep my bleep. Regarding the the Knicks history and dynasty that I'm am I delivering it incorrectly yeah. when I say and then after Pat Riley left with the remnants of Pat Riley and what was a legitimately cool basketball rivalry where the sides did not like each other, Jeff Van Gundy took the blueprint left behind by mm -hmm. Pat Riley. The Van Gundys are famous because they learned at his knee, both of them. And that team beats Miami as a one, beats Pat Riley mm -hmm. as a one with Allen Houston. That's the best Knicks basketball has felt in how long Allen Houston shot going in. The Knicks uh, win as an eight seed, and then the Larry Johnson four, and they get to the finals as an eight seed. Yeah, that, that and then the next year they beat the Heat again in seven, and that gave us the, the famous picture of Pat Riley in the hallway after game seven with his hands on the wall completely drained with emotion of, like, it's happened again. And by the way, you, you're right. Jeff Van Gundy learned from the knee of Pat Riley. You know who had learned at the knee of Jeff Van Gundy? Tom Thibodeau. The cycle continues, Dan, and that's where that emotion comes from. It comes from a, like, a history of passed along word of mouth, and they are here even though they're getting their ass beat in this series. Mike Ryan, uh, out of curiosity, because we haven't delved into the ancient, ancient history of the Heat and the Knicks, and we don't have to here. <laughs> but when the starting point is Pat Riley at his desk after losing that game to the Allen Houston shot, and Alonzo Mourning comes in in his uniform, and he finds his coach at his desk sobbing. Oh. Sobbing, and he yells at Pat Riley, do your job. Coach your f***ing team because he's got a locker room filled with people who are broken. Uh, when the rivalry starts there and it ends in 2023 or where we are now with bleep my bleep and and marrow, the whole thing's been diluted. Uh, I, I, it does harken back. It does mean something to me because I'm of a certain age. I know Jess is has revealed herself to be a Knicks fan sparingly over the the course of the time that she's been with New York us. York till I die. What are you talking about? But I did but not she, know she doesn't today have any... she's a Knicks fan. I didn't know. <laughs> Did you? Uh, maybe you should get to know me better, Dan. Yeah, I've, I've known that it's one of the several teams that she roots for. Uh, and her boyfriend, I know that her boyfriend, Lehman, is a huge Knicks fan. Lehman! And that's why she watches the, the Knicks all the time. But she doesn't really have a connection point because she, as you know, Jess is very young. Super young. And she I did live in New York for six years. But there you go. she doesn't really remember. But so does like that, every girl in their 20s at some point. Heat Knicks things. But to me, it still, it still means something. When they're not wearing alternate uniforms that are terrible that forget their color scheme, it is still the Knicks, and it does bring up something inside me, which I think after there was a Tommy Frazier Orange Bowl in like '95 <laughs> that the Hurricanes lost, and that was essentially an, uh, a national title that was gone. The most pain I had felt in my sports fandom was that Allen Houston shot. So for me, the Knicks will always mean. Pain. Well, but but he holds that over you, and that's what he because he was a kid then too. To Knicks fans too, yeah, they will always mean pain. I know, but to the generation that's on on social media for the most part, they don't actually remember that. Should it's like me saying, you know, like uh, t talking crap to a Nebraska fan because of a failed two point conversion. I it's just borrowed. I don't actually have a memory of that. Do you want to talk with him? Should we have him on in order for you? Do and I him? want to talk? With him, no, we, how, how no, many? that'll be a four zero. Let's <laughs> wait till we win the series and have fun. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I will That's talk after we, I have a result. Old, in hand. old Heat Homer Howard back Lee. there. When Chris Conley, I'm when? still here. Okay, I'm more afraid of the Leafs. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm more afraid of the Leafs more, right no, now. Down, no, and, no. and we're a full game ahead of miss opportunity because that was actually one of the worst games they played this series. Yeah, yeah, uh, they clogged up the middle pretty badly, and because of that, they were, the Panthers were forced to shoot from the outside and along the blue line, and because of that. About over 20 block shots. Yeah. 
from, uh, from the uh, Maple Leafs there. So, yeah, they kind of shut down the Panthers offensively. Bummer. I was so ready. I, was, I, told, I pulled up my Wagoneer to a crew, and I said, get in, losers. We're going to the conference finals. Yeah. And he did. And we're not going yeah. to the conference finals just yet. Uh, you were there, correct? Yeah, there's no way to say this. I was, uh, I was in a box with Dan Marino. I mean, there is a way to say this. It's, I was just in a you box. You could have just yeah. said you were just yeah. in a I was at yeah. the game. Box, yeah. No, wait, where's the button here? I'll find it. Just give me a second. Look at me, Yes, thank All you. All right, there you go. Look at me, You can't be controlling these things. Like, you could have just alerted me, and I would have done it. I thought it, you it wouldn't have, have gone like that. Or you could have been paying attention and known he did a very – Quintessential look at me, Louie. Uh, no, but he also did a callback on a joke that's 15 years old that you missed because you were distracting me by fiddling with the box. Or Maybe. I missed because I wasn't here 15 years ago. Uh, that is what happened. You weren't here 15 years ago, but this is where uh, this week you have been sort of inconsistent. The last couple of weeks, your performance has been inconsistent, getting up during uh, a, you know subject matter that's delicate, being distracting. Your rhythmic timing... Uh, with the show has been a lot of look at me, Louie, Amin wants, hey, everyone clear out. Amin wants the ball. He wants to do different jokes than the rest of us. Let me just say right now, first of all, the idea that anyone would be distracted because someone got up and walked. Dan, you could have a circus in here. You could have acrobats and trapeze artists and a bear on a unicycle. But I usually do. On. That's Tuesdays and it's uh, it's Greg Cody and it's doing things that you do because everyone loves playing the Stu Gods and Greg Cody role. Everyone loves, hey, I don't have to pay attention to the serious subject matter. I'm going to Distract Dan while going over here and talking about my poop in it the in the chat chat that's in the Slack. First of all, it's not in the Slack. You got to be invited into the group chat. Second of all, it wasn't uh, like completely off topic. I was actually going to grab that pirate picture of you because we were. I was pointing out the irony of you talking about how pirates become privateers or whatever, and I was like, well, that's kind of what's happening to us, isn't it? And so it was not only pithy yeah, observation ne next level humor but, but yeah. also also yes. visually yes. no visually yes. because it this was. is a visual medium well i don't you guys didn't even mention it yesterday okay if you have a samsung device all right listen to me well, okay. we'll get wow. to that in okay. a second no look, go sit in the penalty box for two minutes Whoa. So that, uh, i'm sorry you're trying to grow go, the audience no I, i'm trying to, i'm sorry go trying to enrich the do the, me a favor and i will tell the audience i will let them look behind the curtain when you're in that seat i need you to be stugatz i need you to understand the jokes that stugatz is understanding i've asked this from you Stugatz is going to be here less and less, and I need you to play the role the way the team is playing it in the way, because this is a familiar medium that people get nowhere we're going with the joke. Stu Gotts famously did this 15 years ago. His voice is going to sound younger. It's going to sound healthier. This was Stu Gotts breaking into the business. All right, Chris Rock is coming up next. I have to get out of here. How do I do this without dropping names here? I have a dinner with Dan Marino. I guess there's no way to do it without dropping it. I have to go to dinner. Would yes. have been fine. Well, with Dan Marie. <laughs> yeah, that's why you're leaving early. It's a All special right. dinner. You, I just wanted to go to to, dinner. you wanted to drop the name. Well, I just wouldn't leave to go to dinner. Go. Go ahead. Chris oh. Rock is up next. Dan Marino. Mike Ryan did the same thing. He had a box with Dan Marino because he's trying to become a mover and shaker. And we're becoming such movers and shakers that we ignored a giant announcement from DraftKings yesterday. This is what he began to bring up. And one of the reasons is because we had to give Stugatz no consequences for his lies because he's totally out of control. And, Mike, I need to know when I have permission because this is what he's trying to do right now. He's like, hey, forgot weekend observations. Got to do it. Can I'm going to call in during what you guys are doing today. Can you guys do weekend observations for me, and I'll put it on stupidity. <laughs> this is the text I just got, and I'm like, we've got to rein this in, Mike, because we're going to a channel now with DraftKings, and I want to be able to talk about all the stuff Stugatz is doing behind the scenes because DraftKings is starting a channel, and of course Stugatz wants it to be 24 hours of Stugatz, and I need to be able to talk about this because he's not been a great employee lately. We're on Samsung TV Plus with uh, DraftKings Network, which just launched in, launched in earnest this week and you can find our show on there daily and we're very excited about that i know our audience wants to see us in more places keep in mind this is just the beginning and i saw the promo video and the first face that you see a very young jessica smetana we've got a channel that we're starting we should have announced this yesterday DraftKings was making big announcements as a billion dollar company and we didn't have time for it and one of those announcements is a means gonna get a show which is a bad idea channel 1168 a means getting a, a very show. young Jessica Smetana, I, I should add, filmed less than a year ago. <laughs> because we're trying to make stars around here with a network. And Amin 
I need a mean's help. Mike, I'm scared about this show with the mean. I'm scared. Yeah, someone that's been in the meetings. I'm also scared. <laughs> He's got bad judgment. <laughs> yeah, he does. Yeah, all these things are right. <laughs> what time is that show? What time is that show? You know, it's very early developmental stages, but uh, we hope to launch uh, very soon with that show. Uh, that's not a good idea. No. It's not ready. No. He's no. not ready. His judgment is bad. His he judgment is very Jessica's bad. Jessica has shown good judgment. Jessica, there Thank have been you. no problems with Golik and Smatty. These things are successful vehicles that don't cause any issues because she's got impeccable journalistic judgment. The same cannot be said of everyone at this company. No, no. And they've been rewarded for that. Jessica has her own show with Jessica Mike Golick, has, a Jessica star. Jessica has like three shows. <laughs> Jessica, <laughs> Jessica works really hard. And I, she gets fans. Yeah, the fans. You, you they always think she's on vacation. She's not the one doing what Stugatz is. <laughs> no. Stugatz is Thank always you. on vacation. No. Jessica is working a lot. Yeah, I, yeah. You said that Jessica speaks up for the audience, which is um, kind of weird because the audience speaks up for itself plenty. I hear from the audience a lot. There's a lot of misnomers w with regards to Jess. Her time off is actually working from home. Stugatz's time off is working from Dead and Company. Can you guys help me, though? He wants to do weekend observations. He just said, hey, I'll call in at 11. Sure, buddy. We got it. He we wants us handle, to do buddy. stupidity to help him and do his Why job. Why doesn't he just he do it on stupidity? That, because he needs us to do it. He can't Why? just do it with Is it sponsored? He can't do it with just Billy. Yes, it's sponsored. Okay. Uh, well, we're over on time. Let me sort this out with, <laughs> with Stu Gods and find out if it's What's sponsored. What's the name of your show, I mean, We didn't announce any of this yesterday. TBD. I am genuinely torn right now in the last segment of the local hour, which has always been my favorite hour of doing this, whether to run off the audience with Panthers talk, the national audience, or run off the audience with spiritual platitudes. However, I will say that for it to be too busy yesterday as a company, like this, the last couple of years, I think, have been hard on all of us. I don't know who has been hardest on. I know Jessica has taken an unfair beating working on a million different projects to help all of this get off the ground. And yesterday, we had a big day as a company that we just skipped right past. The DraftKings channel is giving out shows, and they're allowing us to help program that network and Get some of the greatest joys we've ever gotten in this business, building a voice of something from the ground up that you can just watch if you want to, you know, do what the kids are doing that I don't understand and watch on all available medias that expand our reach to places. We've been building a video department with a lot of pain. A lot of employees have been added. A lot of people working very hard and only been criticized. So we've opted for spiritual platitudes. There you go. Jessica and Amin have worked so hard believing in this company. Jessica, particularly, getting beat up from every angle when she's not working hard enough because she needs days off because there are other things she's working on that will now become shows on a network. Tell me how smart I am, too. <laughs> well, Amin gets how just beat doing? up on Dan. <laughs> well, Amin uses bad judgment all the time, all the time, in every orifice of the company, and Amin, too made a bet on the company, and the company made a bet on Amin, and Amin has now got a television show. I've heard some of the ideas. They sound scary and terrible. <laughs> also, I don't know how Jess found the time to get her best friend, Charlotte Wilder, hired. Uh, I, had, I had nothing to do with this. <laughs> well, no, right, Twitter, told me, Twitter told me that you got her I, hired. I'm not so in charge of incredible. hiring decisions, yeah, or else there no would have been other decisions. Because no one's their friends hired at this company. Right. Never. If I were in charge of hiring at Metal Arc, yeah, let's just say I, I would have made some strange decisions the last uh, couple months. Amin had the relationship with us where we didn't even get to hire our friend. Our friend just told us he was coming. Well, I, wa I want people to understand the backstory as someone, and I forgive me for the spiritual platitudes, but it's moving and meaningful to me. Jessica hired Samson, by the way. That was her decision. So just remember that the next time you give her crap about Charlotte. Well, this is this is the next step on this. Now Amin and Charlotte, I can, it's no longer nebulous. They're doing a show together. So Jessica has somehow recommended to her best friend, it's a good idea for your career to trust the judgment of Amin El Hassan. Wait, I thought it was the other way around. I thought Jessica told me, hey, you should get Charlotte Wilder. I'm not sure if either of those things happened. No, I'm pretty sure it happened that way. Well, I want to know because I don't know what this show is I'm making all the decisions right here. Who is making the decisions? 
Who's making these decisions that Amin is doing a show with Charlotte Wilder? And Jessica, you sign off on this? You endorse this? What? Tell me more about this show, because what I've heard seems like a lot of- I don't know anything I ever talked to anybody. All Ter I know is Golik and Smeddy, off the looking glass, DNF, <laughs> wherever you find your podcast. Now on the Fast Channel, Golik and Smeddy, 1168 on Samsung TV Plus on Tuesdays. That's our, our Golik and Smeddy day. Check and us out. And DNF is on our YouTube page, which you yep. should always check out, especially when we go live. We, uh, in recent days, have seen the power of our audience. A writer on strike, you make $30,000 for him when you care about this thing. It's what gives it the value that it has, even as it creaks and breaks and Stugatz tries to ruin it. We have a place to send our audience now that if you want to support the things that we're doing, you're about to see a network grown by us uh, that's going to have a lot of mistakes in it, and we're going to find our voices, and we're going to try— Us and Ross Tucker. We're going to try to recreate, best we can, a content network outside of the mainstream that exists on your fast channels. And you will see a radio station or a television station. You will see something that will have a meme doing a show with Charlotte. Mike, I've heard some of the ideas. They all scare me. They all scare me. Good. That's the point. Yeah. Ooh, it's I, like I, a haunted show? I, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I love Amin's ambition and his uh, audacity. And I think when people think big and you rein them in a little, you still have something that by comparison is really, really different. They've already cut my legs out from under me, Dan. He said my ideas were too dangerous. Too dangerous. What does that even mean for a television Well, this show? is the thing. This is the thing, right? It I'm, became very clear that a mean the person could not exist as that, as he does. That's, this. that's a real conversation. <laughs> yeah. we well, had. Let, let, let's discuss <laughs> this. No, I want to have it right now and over the course of the show because I want to celebrate this a little more than we have because we're moving very fast around here, making a lot of and I want to celebrate. All right. I've got over two and a half nebulous. All and right. let's yeah. not describe it as making a lot of shall we? Yeah. Yeah, we're not allowed to say that word yeah. anymore on the I, Fast Channel, yeah. Yeah. which is tough. Which is tough, especially when you favorite words. <laughs> lead a segment. Okay, I am learning this for the first time. That's and why oh, we got the list the, of the, the banned email. words, the email, and I was like, ooh, I didn't see that what email. are all the dirty words? I, don't want Dan, I want to read them. I don't want Dan to think that the show has changed well, all that much. I want him, if he wants to say the F word occasionally or the S word for effect, that he can still do so, just knowing that it means slightly a little bit more work for our video team. And no one will hear it. Yeah. Well, no, on the podcast, I'll hear. Okay, the thing we've been building over the last couple of years that you have supported, that is a network outside of a network, and, I mean, you might have wondered, why the hell is Pablo here? Why Samson? I hope we are able... I hired Pablo, too. ...to continue to hire people like Charlotte Wilder. I can say what here about the show with Amin, because this is going to be something that exists, and I don't know what can be announced and what can't be announced, uh, that's not a great endorsement. Something that exists, no, but I am scared. Spooky. I am scared. <laughs> it's not. It's not a horror show. Although I, occasionally it could be, I guess. I am scared at how Amin will represent the company as spiritual platitude. Spiritual platitude. He gets to ESPN and he doesn't like that he has to go stand on a mark. That's not what he thought sports was. Jorge Sanano tells us this guy needs to be in your universe. Has to be. This guy understands what you guys are doing better than anyone at ESPN. This guy does not paint inside the lines. We send him to the All-Star game with Tony and Lewis, a disaster of an event. He wraps himself in sheets, calls it content, and gets drunk all weekend. That's who we've given a show. He bet on this company. We bet on him. He's got a show that's coming out now. And also, he wants it to be different than anything else in the history of television. And the ideas are too big. And I can't have the bleep changing who Amin wants to be at his core. <laughs> Nobody can control That's us. DraftKings <laughs> channel shouldn't be controlling us on bleeps and what the language is. Well, I wish we talked about well, we John, can't yeah. curse, so. John Tavares. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, the, I, the thing that I will reveal is what Mike said is absolutely true. At one point, we had an existential conversation about, wait a second, if I do this on, this sh on the, my show, then is my persona, does that carry over? to the rest of the Dan Lebatard cinematic universe? Do I have to be consistent, or can I just be something completely different over there and come in here and be myself? Mike, he's going to be himself at every turn. It's going to be weird. I don't trust his judgment.
we don't have to talk about it anymore. So you are going to be a ghost. Yeah. I don't have to worry about anything going on with Jessica and Golick. Not a headache going to be caused Never. over there. It's just going to well, be smart, good content. I get a headache every time he can't log into Riverside to record the podcast. But that's my cross to bear. It is It is a wonderfully fun dynamic. You would agree Barky has to shoot that biscuit. He's shoot yeah. He's Absolutely. got to shoot that biscuit in the first passes. period. Go out there and be the captain. It's the best look they generated all game, and it's not my captain taking so, it. I have a question because it's been often described to me that Maple Leafs fans are the Knicks of the NHL, right? Like legacy franchise, won a long, long time ago. But far kinder. Are they? Yeah. Yeah, because they were cheering, and I went into a suite of just uh, Maple Leafs fans, and I said, shut up! And they stopped. They said, oh, sorry. They said, that's Dan Marino. <laughs> Dude, that happened. And Justin Thomas. That happened at the Nick game yesterday. There was a guy in my cousin's section who was a Heat fan, and he was rooting for the Heat. And finally someone said, shut up and go find your Coke dealer, is what they yelled at him. We have the same dealer, New Yorker. <laughs> <laughs> and it's more expensive because you moved down. Wait a minute. New York has gotten to the point of making fun of our cocaine habit? Who do you think's buying all our coke? <laughs> Who are you talking <laughs> like, about? They come down here for our coke. <laughs> Did you realize that all of you are now making me move out of Miami oh. because of how much coke that, you're doing in uh, our traffic? That is a pot kettle situation if uh, I've ever heard one. I apologize. That wasn't the quote. The quote was, sit your coke dealer ass down. Oh. oh. He might have actually been his coke dealer. Is that a compliment or an insult in Miami? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's like it's guy. more like a third <laughs> job. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got new shows coming and a network. Spooky That's show. Pretty exciting. It's <laughs> not a spooky show. Coke is not the four-letter C word we're not allowed to say anymore, by the way.